Hello, welcome to the Transana screencast on converting media files. This is David Woods. There are two circumstances when you might want to convert your media files using Transana. The first circumstance is when you have a media file that doesn't work very well in Transana, and the second is when you have a media file in a format that Transana doesn't support. That is, you have a file that doesn't work at all in Transana. Here, for example, are a couple of video files from a recent experiment I did. One file is a high quality video from a camera. The file's in DV format, embedded in an AVI file that's almost six gigabytes in size, even though it's less than half an hour long. The screen resolution for this file is 720 pixels wide by 480 pixels tall, and the file was encoded with a bitrate of about 30,000 kilobits per second. Those values are not as high as HD video, but that's still very good quality video where I can see a lot of detail. The second file is a video screen capture file of someone playing a video game. The screen resolution is about 1,440 pixels wide by 800 pixels tall, and the file was captured with a bit rate of about 6,500 kilobits per second. It's a very high quality video and I need that level of quality for some of the analytic work I'll be doing because I need to be able to read everything that's on the screen. There are two problems with these videos. While they work fine on my fancy new computer, they don't work that well on some of the older computers that some members of the research team have to use. The video can be jerky, the media starts and stops aren't smooth, sometimes it takes a few seconds for the audio and video to get playing right, they're just too high a resolution and have too high a bit rate for some of the older hardware that we have. The second thing is that these video files were collected simultaneously and we want to be able to analyze them using Transana's multiple simultaneous media file feature. These files are just too high a quality to be able to do that. The solution is to create lower resolution, lower bit rate copies of these two files for our analysis in Transana. To do that, I'm going to use Transana's built-in media conversion tool. The first thing I'm going to do is make a note of the names and locations of the media files I want to convert. In this case, I can check episode properties to see that information. Now I'm going to start Transana's media conversion tool by going to the Tools menu and choosing Media Conversion. If you don't see that option in the menu, you're probably using an older version of Transana and need to upgrade to version 2.50 or later. I'm going to use the Browse button to find my first file. You'll notice that Transana creates an output file name that adds the word analysis to the media file name to indicate that this is a special version of the file created specifically for analysis. That should tell you that this is a lower resolution copy of your original media file. We're going to change the video size because we want to use multiple simultaneous media files in our analysis the amount of screen space that can be devoted to each media file is limited. Therefore, it's perfectly reasonable to reduce the image size to 480 by 320 pixels. We're going to set the video bit rate to 1500 kilobits per second. While that's considerably lower than the original media files, it's still good enough for the kind of analysis that we'll be doing with these files. And it means we'll be able to show multiple media files at one time even on our older computers. Sometimes it takes a bit of experimentation, a bit of trial and error, to find the settings that work best for you, given the hardware that you have, the media files that you start with, and the specific analytic needs that you have. But once you find a group of settings that work well for you, you can use them over and over again. So now I'm going to press the Convert button and Transana will do its best to convert the media files. I've worked hard to make Transana's media conversion tool work on as many media file types as I can, but I can't promise that it will work on everything. Through the magic of video editing, 
we don't have to watch the entire conversion process. How long this process takes depends on how powerful your computer's processor is. Transan is usually reasonably good at predicting how long it's going to take, but not always. So I'm now going to edit out about 20 minutes worth of converting this file. When the conversion is done, Transana will ask us if we want to update all of the media file references in the database. In this case, since the media file is already in our database, and since some of the research team members have been having trouble with this media file, we'll say yes. If we wanted to keep a high resolution copy of the file in Transana, because we needed to be able to read things from the screen, for example, we would say no, and we would create a new episode for this lower resolution copy of the media files. Transana's media conversion tool will work on a variety of formats that either don't normally work with Transana, such as flash video in FLV or SWF formats, or that don't work with some computers, such as MPEG-2 video files on computers that don't have an MPEG-2 codec installed, or Windows Media Video Files, WMV, on an Apple OS X computer. So even if you can't play a particular video file on your computer, give Transana's media conversion tool a try. And if the media conversion tool doesn't work for you, be sure to look for other conversion tools on the internet. Chances are pretty good that you'll be able to find a tool that will be able to convert whatever format of media file you have to one of the formats that does work in Transana. Now I'm going to close the media conversion tool and I'll show you an example that I prepared earlier of these two video files, much smaller now, running with multiple transcripts. Thanks for coming to watch this screencast and be sure to look for others on the Transana website.